In an earlier video, I talked about timing. What is it, how to achieve it, and its importance in the game of snooker. Well, we'll talk about the importance of it a little bit later. But when we look at how to achieve it, most players know that, you know, you've got to get the, the Q-tip speed at and through the ball. But when you've got good timing, what have you actually achieved? And this is the point that is open to controversy. For me, it's about Q-tip contact time between that Q-tip and the cue ball. And we borrowed a high-speed camera to try and prove this, that when you've got good timing, there is an increase length of time of contact. Now, to some extent, we showed that there was an increase in time, but we didn't actually prove it. We want to borrow another camera, a better high-speed camera, to try and prove it. Now, bearing in mind that these cameras cost between 30 and 50,000 pounds, people are reluctant to let us borrow it. But we've got contacts and hopefully that, that borrowing will come to fruition. But let's just have a look at the timing again. Let's look at its importance. Well, if, you are, if a, a beginner wants to screw a ball back, yeah, he will hit the ball low, but he will hit it hard to try and get the cue ball back to this, cube, this cushion here. So he'll hit the ball hard, really giving it some hammer, and I'm wondering why it's only just about reached the, the cushion. I hit the ball low and I've hit it hard, etc. Well, an expert doesn't do that. He will try to caress the ball. Yeah, from there, he won't hit it hard unless it's absolutely necessary. He will stroke the ball, getting through the ball very smoothly. From there, hardly hitting the ball at all. A particularly good exponent of that, obviously, is Ronnie O'Sullivan. Another good way to demonstrate this contact time is to watch a good billiard player. Well, particularly when he plays a long jenny. Now, a long jenny is, we'll say, when the red is in this position and the cue ball is coming out of balk, he will play a, con a contact onto the red and play the white as an in-off into one of the corner pockets. That is a long jenny. Now the good billiard player will exaggerate that contact time between cue tip and cue ball for two reasons. One, it ensures that he's not applying any degree of stun on the cue ball, but also is getting through the ball more to increase the contact time to generate more spin on this cue ball, side spin that is. So that when he gets down to it, it's not that accurate that he can guarantee to hit the pocket every time, but what he can guarantee is even if he hits his side cushion, and then so as long as the cue ball hits that far jaw, he'll have so much spin on this cue ball that it will spin into the pocket. Now that is a good billiard player. He's increasing the contact time right, to increase the amount of spin on the cue ball. It's a little bit like saying, the nearer you get to a push shot, without it actually being a push shot, right, then the better the timing is going to be. Now I've said that before, but let me repeat it once more. The nearer you get to it being a push shot, without it actually being a push shot, then your timing will be better. Why is it so important to have this timing? Well, as I said, a beginner will hit it hard. Well, the harder you hit the ball, the more accurate you've got to be, both in the actual pot of the ball and in the positioning of this cue ball. But the truth is, the harder you hit it, the potential is there to be less accurate, both in potting and in the positioning of this. If you can stroke the ball, your potting will be more accurate and your positional positioning of, uh, ability of the white ball will be more accurate. I can demonstrate it simply by this. 
a beginner likes to hear this sound. All right? It, it takes a great demand on your accuracy to pot a ball at that pace. Whereas an expert, he will stroke the ball at a nice, gentle pace. I can assure you there is more chance of that gentle ball going in than that forcing shot. So that's why timing is so important. Now, I'd like to make reference to this fella, Joe Davis, 20 years world champion at snooker. He was also a world champion at billiards, one heck of a player. And everybody relates to this book that he wrote as the Bible on snooker. Why do we ignore it when it comes to timing? From here, you know, I've made, uh, I'll make a reference to some of the comments that he's made here. And all you have to do is get the book. But here, it is a prolonging of the tip on the ball. That's not my comment. That's Joe Davis, 20 years world champion. There's another comment that he makes. The drag is caused by the tip holding on to the ball. Again, he's saying that, not me. Finally, he says, the impact is not a swing through, but a playing into the ball, so that the tip, the Q-tip, grips and spins it. You feel the tip holding on to and spinning the ball. You know, ultimately, we may not be able to prove it by measuring it. But there's one thing I do know. When a good player times that ball, when he's hit it beautifully, he might not be able to measure it, but by, by goodness, he knows he's done it. Yeah, and he will feel it. So good luck with that practice.